Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Everybody say, God is good. Say, His mercy is new every morning. How many are excited about that? Isn't that great? That every morning you wake up, there's a fresh dose of mercy. There's a fresh dose of compassion. Let's look. I just want to share a scripture before we go into the lesson tonight. This is Psalms 3, verse 3. Psalms 3, verse 3. And how many are believing God to speak to you tonight? Amen? Amen. I mean, how many need to hear a word from the Lord? I mean, have you ever been to a point in your life or time where you just, you know, as a believers, you know, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, right? So that means that we don't walk by what we feel, right? Isn't that the truth? And, uh, you know, sometimes we feel really good. How many ever felt really good, right? But how many times, uh, you know, there are times in your Christian walk or experience, you just don't feel quite the same, you know? And you're standing in faith and you're moving in faith and you're trusting the Lord, right? You're doing the right things, but there's no feeling involved. And uh, how many are grateful that the Lord is faithful to do this to us? But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. How many of God can do that? I've had that experience more than once in my Christian walk with the Lord. You're just walking and sometimes you just feel like, oh, man, you know, Lord, you're just moving. And, uh, and you're, you're standing, you're believing, you're not confessing anything negative, and, but you're looking to the Lord, and then all of a sudden, it just seems like out of the blue, he just, the switch goes on, and, and you almost feel like you're bipolar in the spirit, because like one minute I was like that, <laughs> it's not no medicine you took, it's just the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, I got the, the winds behind me now. You ever, you ever had it like, you know, when you're riding, you get the winds in front of you, and things are just pushing at you really strong? And it's hard, you know? And then all of a sudden you just go, wait a minute, just, there it is, there it is. And I believe tonight by the grace of God, God's going to do that for you. Amen? I want you to activate your faith now. Just whatever you need, whatever words you need from the Lord, you that are watching, let us know. Let us know uh, you're watching. We have a lot of our members that are you know, at home watching. And, and uh, just let us know. But let's just pray tonight. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. And Lord, tonight we approach your word like little kids. We're saying, Lord, feed us, teach us, reveal truth to us. Your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So tonight, Father, we are believing that faith will be deposited into our hearts. Father, that you'll, be, you'll do what that scripture just said today. We just read, you'll lift up our heads. You'll lift up our spirit, Lord God. And we just thank you tonight for the privilege of being here, privilege of ministering your word. And Lord, I just thank you that you're going to confirm your word with the Holy Spirit. Signs and wonders will follow. Lord, you're going to do great things tonight. We give all glory and honor to you. We look to you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs, the 13th chapter. And let's put the first slight up, Isaiah, so they'll see what we're talking about. And we'll get you. Get, everybody say, this <laughs> will change. <laughs> say it together and say it with some gumption and say it with faith. Say, this yes. will yes. change. And you know, I, you know, how many have some years in your life you're standing and you're believing the Lord and the devil's telling you it ain't going to change, but how many know it will change? I like the scripture in the book of Proverbs when it says, thou shalt decree a thing, or Ecclesiastes, thou shalt decree, or Job, I believe, <laughs> Job, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall uh, be established unto you and light shall shine on your path. You know, when you decree it, and we're decreeing right now, things are changing, Amen. Everybody say, this is going to change. Say, it's going to change in Jesus' name. All right. Now, let's look at the scripture. I want you to see it. Proverbs, the 13th chapter, verse number 12. Proverbs 13, 12. And we're going to get the word. It says, hope deferred. Everybody say, hope deferred. What does it do? It makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a what? It's a tree of life. Notice what this word deferred. Now, hope is an expectation. You're expecting something to happen in the future. You're believing. You have an anticipation of something good to happen. And it says that something good that you're expecting or waiting for is deferred. What does it do? It makes the heart sick. So let's look at a couple of these words. I want you to see it. Hope deferred, slide number uh, thir uh, 22. Let's look at the word deferred. Because uh, there are times that, you know, and you know as well as I know, you're believing, you're standing, you're trusting the Lord, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a space between the amen and there it is, right? 
you believe you receive when you get it, but you know, uh, when the physical manifestation comes, there can be a, a time period. When you pray and ask God to heal you, trust Lord, Lord, I believe by your stripes I'm healed, and there, there's a period of time. And there's other things in our life that we're believing the Lord for. There are things that we're, we, we got hope for. We're, we're, faith gives substance to things hoped for. But the word deferred means this, to delay. Everybody say delay. delay. Or to be drawn out, to drag along. How many have ever felt, now again, we're not going by feelings here tonight, we're faith people. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you're standing and you're believing and you're like, man, it just seems like it's being delayed. I mean, if you were God, you would do things differently, wouldn't you? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? We'd be like, oh, if I was God, you know, we're almost like the cowardly lion going, if I were, you know. But we're not God. And God has infinite wisdom. And there's things that are working. He's working on people. He's working on circumstances. And he's working on you. But he says when hope is delayed or drawn out, dragged along, prolonged, seems like it's being postponed. It's deferred. You know what deferred means? You ever get one of those? We're going to give you 0%. The interest will be deferred, put off for a year. That's a good deferment to extend. Am I preaching to the right people tonight? Yes. Have you ever been in a place where you're believing God for something and you feel, I feel, we all feel, it's taking too long? Yes. <laughs> I bet you Abraham felt that way. God tells him he's 75 years old. You're going to have a child and this, that, and the other thing. And it took 25 minutes before to materialize. No. 25 days. No. 25 months. No. 25 years. <laughs> and we live in a culture that is getting, we want everything fast, don't we? Right? You know? You want, we want it now. We want it now. We don't want to wait for nothing. We don't want it. But you know the good things in our life are those slow cooked meals. The good things in life are those experiences that you and I go through. We walk through. We grow through. And then when you're on the other side, you look back and go, wow, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. How many can testify to that? I've said that plenty of times. Where you went through something, you're like, man, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I didn't understand it when I was going through it. It seemed like it was taking forever. But, Lord, you did something wonderful inside of me, and I would not change a thing. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't give it to me when I wanted it right there and now. Just like that little girl in, in Willy Wonka. I want it now. And she was a bad egg. We're not bad eggs here. <laughs> Can you hear me tonight? Everybody say hope. Go back to the scripture, Isaiah. Hallelujah. Hope deferred. What does it do? It makes the heart sick. Look at the word for sick. Slide number 23. But I'm going to know we got to keep hope, right? Got to keep our hope alive, right? Got to keep, it's, if things are changing. The word sick means this, to, to be rubbed or worn. Have you ever felt that your heart is rubbed, worn, weak, afflicted, sick, grieved, make sick, sorry? You got a sorry heart. <laughs> Tired. You, you ever been there? Yes. But notice what it goes on to say. Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when, but when, not if, but when the desire come, not if. Are you hearing me, church family? But when, but when, not if. Okay, say it one more time. Yes. When, 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 when it's coming. Everybody say it's coming. Say change is coming. Glory to God. 
He said, when the desire cometh, it is a what? Tree of life. Now look at that scripture in the New Living Translation. Are we getting it tonight? We love the Lord. All right. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when, when dreams... How many like that? How many got some dreams? I mean, we got beyond pizza dreams, right? We got dreams. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dreams. When dreams come true, there is life and there's what? Joy. There is joy. Now, Isaiah, put slide number 24 up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are a couple different translations. It says, a Bible in basic English. Hope, hope put off is, is a weariness to the heart. Common English Bible, hope delayed. There's, I'm just showing you the different, different words. Makes the heart sick. Oh. When hope is crushed, good news translation, the heart is crushed. New Century Version says this, it is sad not to get what you hope for, but when wishes that come true are like eating fruit from the tree of life. Look at that scripture in the Message Bible, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. But a sudden, everybody say sudden. sudden. How many believe in the suddens? Could happen tonight. Could happen tonight. I, I tell you. He said, a sudden good break can turn life around. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is how the Lord works. I'm telling you. I, I, I was relating, there, again, I was reading an experience in my life one time. And I kept, boy, I kept telling my wife, boy, just, boy, just, oh. You just felt that, oh. You're just you're kind of drudging, you know. You're, oh. You ever felt that you're just drudging? And you're talking to the Lord. You're looking to the Lord. The devil's telling you a bunch of lies. They're just lies, you know. And you just go, and, and you, you're looking. And all of a sudden, because your heart's looking to the Lord, I remember I told my wife one time, I said, I go, boy, it just seemed like a switch turned on in me. She looked at me, she go, what? I go, something just happened inside of me. She's like, what? I, I don't know. I just, I mean, just one second ago, it felt like the weight of the world. And man, I'll tell you, free as a bird. The wind's pushing me now. How I many the Lord can do that for you? And the Lord can give you a sudden good break. Just, just, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. Are you guys hearing me? Everybody say, thank God for the, the mercy of the Lord. Oh, it's, it's happening. It's happening strong. Hallelujah. Look at this other scripture I want you to see. Uh, let's see. This is an interesting one. Because we've got to keep our hope, right? We've got to keep expecting good things. Look at Ecclesiastes 9.4. Ecclesiastes 9.4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there's still hope. <laughs> Everybody say there's still hope. Things for today could be good. He said, he that's joined to all the land of the living, there's hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> Right? We always talk about the lion being the king of the beast, but I say, say hey, man, man, a, a living dog is better than a, a dead lion. Everybody say, I got hope. I, I'm in the land of the living. There's still hope for my dreams. Are you hearing this? Look at this. I want you to see that scripture in a couple different translations. It's a, uh, just to show you that. <laughs> I, I like that one. That cracks me up. Um, Let me see. Okay, slide number 20, 28. New Century Version says this. But anyone still alive have, has hope. Everybody say we have hope. That's it. We, st we still got hope, right? Any day, any moment, any second. I, I, that's, I believe in the end suddenly. I, I believe that at one moment you can be in prison like Joseph, fighting off discouragement daily. 
<laughs> fighting off your environment daily, <laughs> questioning, having to resist the thoughts to question God daily. And you, I could just see him there, and all of a sudden he's there, and all of a sudden, just one, just one moment, he's, he's in the prison, and the next moment, he's second in command. I believe that passionately. I believe you can be cowering in an upper room, afraid to show yourself in public one minute, and then all of a sudden, and suddenly, the Holy Ghost falls, and all of a sudden they're filled with power, their lives are changed, they're on the street, and they're world changers instead of cowering in fear. Amen. I believe that. At any single moment, any moment, expect, keep your expectancy on. Don't quit. Are you guys hearing me? Now let's, let's look at some different things. Because you know a lot of times when we, as believers, we go, you know, Pastor Michael, you know, you know, uh, you know we should just have an easy road. I'm going to just share some scriptures with you tonight. <laughs> and please don't stone me, all right? But, but I just want to give, just to help you, encourage you a little bit, okay? Because we should get comfort from all the scriptures. Let's look at Psalms 34, 19, because we believe things are going to change. But you've got to have a mentality in your mind that you, you, you can't think that, well, I'm a Christian, therefore everything's going to be rosy. We're not going to have any problems. It's going to be smooth sailing. <laughs> and you're going to see from the scripture, it's not true. Now, now, we've talked about it plenty of times here. Now, there are times, you know, we open the door. You know, when problems come, you know, we don't need to talk a lot about this because we've shared quite a bit about it. You know, when problems come into your life, first thing I do is, there, is there an open window? D am I doing something? Is there an open door? Did I give the devil place? <clears throat> Did I give him room? Is there an open door? And so you make sure. You know, make sure you're, you're doing what God's told you to do. You're walking in love. You're, you're walking in forgiveness. You check those things. I, I check it all the time. If, there's, if things start to get rough, I go, oh, what's going on here? What's going on? I check it. I check, make sure all the windows are closed because the storm's coming. There's a storm blowing, you know? I want to make sure my windows are closed. But after that... You can't get, an, there's, there's an attack that comes to the believer. And you could be doing everything right. There's a difference. If you're doing something wrong, you open the door, you better close the window, right? Close the door, close the window. But then there's times you're a believer, and you're walking, and you're doing, and you're honoring the Lord, and man, it's still, I don't want to use this word, but it kind of stinking. It's, it sucks, man. It's like, this, things are just rough here. <laughs> But that too shall pass. But notice this. I just want to. And we're going to just look at a few scriptures here just to help you, to comfort you. Because maybe you're sitting there going, Pastor, you know, things are a little tough right now and I don't understand. I want this to pass, but I don't understand. Look, at, I just want you to get comforted by the word. It says, it says, many are the afflictions of the sinners. Of who? Of the righteous. But I like the, the last part's good. We like the last part, right? But the Lord, what? He delivers him out of them, what? All. But the first part is true, nevertheless. Let's look at these words, okay? It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out. Many are the afflictions. Look at the slide number two for the word afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. This is a good word. I can even say this Hebrew word. It's just R-A. <laughs> right there. See it? Bad disagreeable is are there times that things can come our way as christians that are disagreeable that could they could be malignant are there times that you're you're the righteous you're doing the right thing and things could be unpleasant things evil could try to attack us things that could give us pain things that would try to cause us to be unhappy things that would try to get, create a state of misery Worse, I like this one. Worse than worst. <laughs> I'm never been there. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. You're like, dog, man, this is worse, man. But this is worse than worst. Have you ever felt like something's dysfunctional and something just something's not right? 
And the word dysfunctional means something's not operating normal or properly. It's, it's not functioning properly. Things don't seem to be working the way they should be working. Have you ever been there? Go back to the scripture. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. That doesn't mean you're a bad person because you're experiencing things that are coming against you. Things are attacking you. Things are trying to make you miserable or dysfunctional or unhappy or misery and all those other things. Unpleasant. Are you hearing me? He said, many are, don't, don't stop there. Many Christians stop there and go, oh. No, thank God, but out of every attack, every miserable attack, every bad, every evil attack of the enemy, the Lord delivers us out of them all. Amen. But the reality is not bad. <laughs> That's the truth. But that first part of that verse is true. You're going to experience some ugly things. You can't just blink them away like I dream a genie. Or this, I gene it. It's, they're going to come. And sometimes we're going to see in a moment, too. Uh, I, don't want, I want to get to more scriptures tonight, so I don't want to uh, camp too long. Isaiah go, go, says, many are the afflictions of the right, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Uh, slide number three. You guys love the Lord. Is this the right word for you guys tonight? Yeah. This is what God gave me for you. <laughs> but the Lord mm, snatches, delivers us. He snatches us away. You're in the middle of your problem. God says, snatch away. God delivers you from danger. God rescues you. Yeah. How many are thankful that no matter what the devil throws your way, he goes, God's going to snatch you out of it. Yeah. God's going to deliver you. Yeah. I'm loving the word, man. Look at this scripture in the New Living Translation. Oh, we just love the Lord. Some of you are relating to the strong tonight. I can feel it. <laughs> the righteous... Didn't say because they did anything wrong. Now, again, remember, now I'd always say, check yourself, but that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And we don't judge people. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we look at someone and say, oh, well, yeah, they must be a, a, a Brian and Dini. They must have done something terrible. I can't believe the problems they're going through right now. No. So you, you can't. We, we're not, we're, we can't go, Jehovah, move over. You know, let me sit on the throne. No, he's the Lord. <laughs> Right? And the Lord knows everything, and we, we can't judge according to appearance or eye appearance. I can't say, well, Andy must be really missing it big time. My goodness, see, the problems are they're getting really attacked. The righteous face many troubles, but the Lord rescues them from each and every one. If somebody gets attacked with a physical element or something, you go, you can't just go, well, they must have done something wrong. Now, so, again, sometimes they open doors, but sometimes you didn't do nothing. Yeah. Are you guys hearing me today? Yes. Is this making spiritual yes. sense? Yes. Now, let, let's, let's give you some other translations of this. Look at slide number four. <laughs> the New International Reader's Version, New, and I, New, New International Reader's Version says this, anyone who does what is right... May? Come on, may have troubles? Can anybody testify to that? You ever had troubles? But the Lord, what does he do? Thank you, Lord. Saves them from all, from all of them. Good news translates to this. Good people suffer many problems, troubles. But, the, but, 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 but the Lord saves them from them all. The New Century Version says it's people who do what is right may have many problems. <laughs> I mean, this isn't like one of your like, woohoo messages, like, woohoo. No, preach the last part. No, the last part's there, it's true. But the Lord will solve them all. That's the exciting thing about life. We're not going by ourselves. No matter what you're facing, just go, Lord, here's a problem. Here's a challenge. Here's something coming our way. But Lord, I think you're gonna snatch me out of here. You're gonna rescue me, Lord. Look at that scripture in the Message Bible. <laughs> I'm loving the word tonight. D disciples so often get into trouble. Still, God is there every time. <laughs> How many are thankful about that? All right. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 3.12. <laughs> 
Oh, these are the happy scriptures. I, I got plenty of them for you tonight. I got a good dose. Okay. He goes, yay, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus, shall what? Suffer persecution. So that, that's not an excuse not to live godly. Don't try to use the scripture and reverse it. Well, I'm not going to live godly, so I won't suffer persecution. Well, you're, you're going to have other problems then. <laughs> But look at the word for persecution. I want you to see it, my friend. Slide 15. Uh, slide 5, Isaiah. Sorry about that. Those that, to seek after eagerly, earnestly, to be mistreated. Have you ever been mistreated? To be harassed? To be troubled? This is just what the scripture says is going to happen. All those that live godly. Why doesn't everybody like me? Why, why don't they like us? <laughs> I don't understand. Why don't they like me? I got a big smile, and I try to encourage people, and I just want to do the right thing, and how come they don't like me? <laughs> they didn't like Jesus. Jesus was the best. They didn't like him. Look at this. I want you to see. Let's look at that scripture in the Amplified, my dear friend. Indeed, all who delight in piety and are determined to live a devoted and godly life in Christ Jesus will meet with persecution, will be made to suffer because of their religious stand. Look at that uh, slide number six. This is the Bible in basic English. Faith comes by what? Not that we want any problems, but thank the Lord he delivers us. <laughs> yes, and all those... Excuse me, yes, and all whose purpose is to be living in the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus will be cruelly attacked. Are you guys hearing this? Okay. Look at that in the Message Bible. Always fun. <laughs> we love the word. Anyone who wants to live all out for Christ. Is in for a lot of trouble. <laughs> Who wants to be sold out for the Lord? <laughs> There's no getting around it. <laughs> and this pretty <briefly, laughs> Sometimes the message Bible is like beautiful to me. I don't know. That's probably the Bible I would have wrote, you know. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I mean, these are not scriptures if you're doing an altar call. Billy Graham's up there going, you know, just as we am, just come without one plea. Just come, for the Lamb of God was slain for thee. Come, come, come. Oh, come, come, come. But by the way, if you're going to want to live all out for God, <laughs> the fine princess, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of trouble. There's no way getting around it. <laughs> Look at John, John the 16th chapter, verse 33. There's no way to get around it. Some people say, well, if I get saved, will all my friends still like me? Probably not. They're going to think you're, how many have lost some friends because of your wife? Yeah, you just, they just think you're weird. You know, they don't understand you. They talk behind your back. But uh, how many know, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus, right? It's the best thing, right? Jesus said it like this. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, but in the world you shall have what? Tribulation. Be of what? Good cheer. Why? I've overcome the world. Again, victory. Right? But in the world. Right? Now, let's, let's go to here. Let's go to Peter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. And we're going to go to verse number um, 12 there, my friend. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh you, Isaiah, man, you're flying tonight. What did you have? Uh, espresso? Was that computer working good tonight? <laughs> Goodness. All right. Beloved... Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. <laughs> okay, so let's look at some of these words. It says, beloved, don't think it strange. Now, let's read verse 13, and then we'll come back to verse 12. I just want them to see the whole... Can you put them up together, Isaiah 13 and 12? Let's just put them together. And then he says, beloved, oh, put uh, 12 and 13 together. 
Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Because it ties right in, verse 13. But what, what should you do? Rejoice, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. All right. So, but, but notice the first part. Notice the first part. He said, Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial. Let's look at the word beloved. I want you to see that. Slide number seven. We love the word. So he's writing to these precious Christians. And I want you to notice the word that he uses here. There's the Greek word. And, and it, it, you can see the word agape is there because it's beloved. And, but you can see the root is agape. He says, he's writing. He says, guys, I much loved. How many are glad that we are much loved by the Lord, right? God esteems us. God, we're dear to the Lord. We're God's favorites. The favor of God's on our life. We're worthy of God's love. The word favorite means preferred above all others, right? Of the same kind. God loves us. So he starts off by giving them this hard word. He starts off by saying, you know, I want to tell you the first thing. You guys are greatly loved. I want you to know that you are a loved person, you're esteemed, you're worthy of love, you're, you're walking in the favor of God. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Right? He starts out the, the, the verse like that. Go back to the scripture. And then he gives them the meat here. He says, you're loved, but that doesn't exempt you. He said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Notice what the word fiery trial is. I want you to see that, my dear friend. First, he says, think it not strange. Slide number eight. So he says, man, he says, you're loved. God loves you. You're not doing anything wrong. You're living in God's favor. You're worthy of love. But he says, don't think it's strange. To think strange, it means to receive as a guest, to entertain. Don't let this thought get in your mind of being astonished or think it's strange. It's a strange thing. Don't give it a lot of consideration. This is what a lot of people do. They go, well, I don't understand. I don't understand. Why, 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 is, it, why is this happening to me? I don't understand. I don't understand why the, the fire's on. I don't understand the temptation. I don't understand. You think it's strange, and that's kind of what that word's saying. It says, the first thing you and I got to do is don't, don't think it's weird that you're getting attacked. Don't think it's weird. I think that's the first thing Christians do is they, they go, I don't understand. I don't understand. What? Why? And, and then they get mad at the Lord. How many Christians get mad at the Lord? I, I don't understand. I don't understand. It's an attack. Only good things come from God. God is good. Don't, don't, don't put God over here and you're over here. God's with you. He loves you. You're walking in the favor of God. Don't think it's strange. <laughs> Whoa, this is weird. Pastor Michael said we'd never have any problems. Why is it getting so hot in the kitchen? Why is this fiery trial on me? I don't understand. Don't think that way. It's going to come. We just went through a bunch of scriptures there, right? <laughs> Many are the afflictions of the righteous. In the world, you're going to have pressure. Go back to the scripture, my friend. He says, beloved, think it not strange concerning... Not just a trial, he says, the fiery trial, which is to try you. Look at the word for fiery. Slide number nine, my dear friend. We love the word. The fiery trial, it's burning. It's, 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 it's the, the burning by which metals are roasted and reduced. It's so hot that metals are reduced and they're roasted. It's a refiner's fire. And what a refiner's fire did, it's to... to to bring to a fine or pure state, free from impurities. It's so hot. When you're, when you're refining metal, it's so hot, all the impurities come to the top. It's, it's, it's hot. It's horrible. It's, if you would, you would ask the metal, do you enjoy this? No. You're, it's a breaking down of the hardness of the metal. And when the metal's broken down, all of a sudden, all these impurities are coming to the top. It's a refining's fire. And he said, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. He goes, as though some strange thing is happening to you. And this is what a lot of believers will start doing. This is strange. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. No! Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's why I gave you those scriptures. But the Lord delivers you out of them all. That's why in the world you'll have trouble. The, the godly will suffer. I give you all. The, there's more. Don't think it's strange you're being attacked. Don't get mad. Don't get bitter. Don't raise your hand to God. I don't understand. 
No, don't. There's a process. There's a trial. Something's going on here. It's a, it's a time to stand in faith. The trying of your faith is more precious than gold. And this, it's a time where things are being worked out of you, worked in you. Instead of going, using all your energy like this, I don't understand. This is so strange. I don't understand. Just, hey, this is an attack. And God's going to snatch me and rescue me and deliver me. Uh, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I'm gonna and we're going to see that. He's going to say the same thing. He's going to tell you, start getting happy. He says, as though some strange thing happened to you. Look at that scripture in the Amplified, verse number 12, my dear friend. Just 12, Isaiah. And then we'll come up, put these up after, after the message. Then we're going to go to the Message Bible. He says, beloved, do not be amazed and bewildered at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test your quality. <laughs> As though something strange, unusual, and alien to you <laughs> in your position were befalling you. Like, oh, we just, this is so alien. No, this is, this is a reality. Until the day you and I go home to be with the Lord, there, we're going to be attacked. There's going to be trials. There's going to be things. And the cool thing about it is we win. We hold up the shield of faith. We walk by faith. And every single one of these, we always, 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 always win. Look at that in the Message Bible, my dear friend. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion <laughs> that God isn't on the job. <laughs> right? Can you all say, man, hey, Lord, you're still working, man. You got me covered. If that's all you can say during that time. Lord, I don't understand this. I can't make heads or tails, but I just know this. You're good, and you're on the job, and you got me covered. Yeah. And this too shall pass. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing that? Go back to the two scriptures, Isaiah. Let's do that again. Wait, wait, wait. I got some more for you. Uh, the slide number uh, 12, 11. Slide number 11. He goes, my dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful test you are what? Suffering. As though something unusual were happening to you. Painful test. Has anybody been through a painful test? We all have. God's word says this. Dear friends, don't be surprised by the fiery troubles that are coming in order to test you. Don't feel as though something strange is happening to you. Can I use the term, it's par for the course, but we always win? Devil's a liar. We have a shield of faith. We have to hold it up. Why? There is fiery darts. <laughs> right? All right. Put the two scriptures up again, my dear friend. He's, he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is a trial, as though some strange things happen to you. But what are you supposed to do? Instead of wondering and complaining and moaning and groaning and, oh, my goodness, I don't understand, what should we be doing? He said, but rejoice. The word but, I didn't, I didn't put the word up, means it's, uh, it means it's the Hebrew word, a Greek word, Allah, Allah, which means but nevertheless. In other words, no matter what's happening, what's going on, what the trials are doing, the pressure, the troubles, the problem, he said, hey, this is what you and I should be doing. We should be rejoicing. Notice what that word rejoice is. So it's the Greek word, slide number 12. The, the Greek word's there. It means to be glad. In the midst of your trial, in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of what's going on, you're, you're cheerful, you start stirring up joy, you get happy, you start to rejoice exceedingly. You start to get happy by faith. How many of you got to do that? The sacrifice of prayer. You, by faith, you put a smile on your face in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your problems, and you start to get happy. And what does it cause us to do? It causes us to be well, and it causes us. Is, is it getting cold in here? Anybody else cold? cold? Anybody cold? Anybody cold? Can we turn it down here? My dear sister, I don't want to lose the crowd because they're frozen on me. <laughs> don't worry about me. I'll. Uh... <laughs> I sweat anyway. But see, when you do these things right here, it causes us to be well, and it causes us to thrive. It means, the word thrive means to grow or develop 
vigorously. Uh, dear Sister Sandy, maybe turn this one up a little bit. Thank you, sweet. To, to, to grow. And so when you and I start to praise God, we start to worship the Lord, what it happens? We start to, it's got, we're starting to grow. We're growing. We're developing vigorously. We're flourishing. Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. He says, but rejoice. In other words, when all these things are going on, what should you do? Start to get happy. Start smiling. Don't complain. Start rejoicing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What's it going to cause you to do? It's going to cause you to be well, and it's going to cause you to thrive, grow vigorously. How many want to thrive in your problem, in situation? Glory to God. He said, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. Notice this, that when his glory shall be revealed. How many know, that's, I believe that's talking about, it, but he's going to show up in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your problem. His glory is going to be revealed. Yes. How many believe God's going to show up? Notice what this word glory is. It's a great word. Slide number uh, 14. He says, man, when his glory shows up, man, we're going to be rejoicing. We're going to have exceeding joy. If the glory of God is the magnificence of God. It's the excellence of God. It's the preeminence of God. God is so awesome. The dignity, the grace, the majesty of God. But I like this last part. A, a thing belonging to God. And when God shows up and his glory shows up, it's a God thing. And we go, Phew, that's the Lord. He's, 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 he's showing up in the midst of my fiery trial and he's delivering me and he's doing a God thing. How many want God to do a God thing? Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. He says, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory, his glory shall be revealed, not if, it shall be revealed. You may be what? Glad, everybody say glad. glad. With what? Exceeding joy. Everybody say exceeding joy. Exceeding. This is a different word for joy. I want you to see it. Slide number, uh, um, I believe it's 14, is it? Is it uh, 14? <laughs> do I have another one there? Did I do it? I hope I did the slide. What's between 14 and 15? <laughs> Is there something there that I did? <laughs> I didn't do it. Is there nothing there, Isaiah? I apologize. I don't have it there. But it's a different word. He says, he says but be glad with also, he goes, when, this, when God's glory shows up, in other words, by faith, we just start to be happy. By faith, we, we do the first part, the first rejoicing. We start to rejoice and praise the Lord. We start, yes, thank you, Lord. You're in control, God. I don't understand this, Father. And as you start to do this, guess what? 